Welcome back to Global Investor. This evening's guest is Jeff Berwick. He is the president of Stockhouse.com, which is a Vancouver-based internet company that deals with, as the name implies, information about stocks, information about investing. And in fact, this is a large company that has had a phenomenal growth rate. They're now in five countries, that is to say, on the ground in five different countries, as well as being on the web. They are receiving now 60 million hits a month, 60 million pages off of their website are looked at every month. That is phenomenal growth, and we're delighted to hear about the internet revolution and what the AOL Time Warner merger means and what do we need to think about as investors. Here's a man eminently qualified to talk about that, my guest, Jeff Berwick. Jeff, welcome. Thank you. Now, and uh, one of the things I didn't mention uh, in the process of introducing you is you are also in business in Vancouver this month as being uh, one of their 40 and under 40 because you haven't celebrated your 40th birthday yet. Uh, or your 39th or 38th or 37th or pretty much, uh, in fact, you haven't even celebrated your 30th. This is another paradigm shift that we're seeing here, is that we're seeing very energetic, very bright people uh, who suddenly have access to uh, the markets and capital without the traditional barriers to entry in the old industries. And, and you're one of the, the people that's been making that happen. So uh, we want to hear what you think about the, the markets. Let's talk first about the AOL Time Warner merger. What, what happened there and what does that mean? Um, you know, it was the biggest merger of all time involving an internet company. So, uh, of course, it got a lot of the headlines. Um, it's really uh, a wake-up call to anybody who wasn't on the train, <laughs> uh, which to me it's hard to understand who wasn't. But a lot of people from the old school, I deal with a lot of sort of uh, older people, not necessarily that they are actually an age older, but older mindset people who have been in business for mm -hmm. a long period of time were having a hard time, I suppose, uh, realizing the internet was the thing. And uh, this is really the... The, the final wake-up call. If, if they don't know now, they, they really just will never know. Um, the internet is going to be the only medium standing at the at the end of the day, um, and, and it, you know it may not be in its current form by any means. But the way of delivering information, uh, you know, right now we've got telephones, radio, TV, um, all those sorts of ways. Uh, they won't be around in their form at all anymore, and they'll be based on the on the internet sort of infrastructure. That's sort of a backbone. Um, so this deal really. Uh, is uh, the first time an uh, uh, internet mm -hmm. company of this size has merged or pretty much acquired a, a real-world company of this size. So it's, it's pretty exciting, um, but it's not necessarily uh, uh, going to change the landscape that much. It's, it's just more for those who, who didn't realize the big wake-up call. Big wake -up call. Um, you know, we'll probably see a lot of other big deals happening after this. Um, mostly because these, these older world media companies will feel they just need to do it. Uh, a lot of these companies still don't understand why or how they've got to get into this. And it actually is a difficult uh, proposition because it's actually really hard to come from that old world with all your infrastructure that you have, all the people in your company who just know that and try to get into this new medium. Uh, it's almost impossible. And so these older companies pretty much have to get involved with the newer companies or else they're probably going to lose out unless they're really lucky and have really excellent leadership. Well, we've actually seen uh, Time Warner, of course, had a, a what they hoped was an internet strategy with their pat Pathfinder right. uh, that really didn't work. No. Uh, we saw, and in fact, you know, some of the ironies we, we talk, talk about Microsoft as being one of the the new generation of businesses, right. uh, and in fact, it's it's the old guard of one of the new generation That's of true. businesses, uh, one of the largest uh, market capitalizations. And one of the comments that have been attributed to Bill Gates is Bill Gates saying to uh, Steve Case, who is the the who is the president of America Online and is now the chairman of AOL, Time Warner. Uh, who is incidentally 41 years old uh, currently, uh, Bill Gates saying to Steve Case, I can buy 20% of you, I can buy all of you, or I can bury you in Microsoft's drive yeah. to control some of the access to the Internet. Even a company with the resources and, let's face it, the brain power of Microsoft was not able to jump yeah. on board there. So uh, it's a special skill set and a special sensibility in recognizing, first of all, what you're dealing with, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, Microsoft has failed in so many different areas of the internet. Uh, they're actually slow to get on the internet in the first mm -hmm, place. Yep. Uh, they actually, the good thing about being capitalized as big as AOL, Time Warner, and Microsoft, and all these companies is you can throw money at the problem and, and sort of catch up. But it doesn't necessar necessarily mean you're going to win or, or do well. Uh, it just means you're going to at least be in the game. Uh, Microsoft, for example, with their MSN, uh, they did a horrible job of getting into that. 
Microsoft cannot produce content. Um, as much as they try to, they cannot. And I think they realize that now. Uh, and so they're, what they do is they just buy up other content mm -hmm. companies. But that doesn't necessarily work either, because when you buy up a different company, it changes the culture of that company and changes the product of that company. Uh, but it's, it's quite interesting to see that Microsoft, the biggest company in the world, can't just throw money at this problem. It's really, it's, it's an interesting problem for a lot of these companies. Uh, and Microsoft, as you were saying, is, is pretty much a new, new world company. Right. They're, yeah. they're basically a very good computer, very internet, and they still can't even solve it. So a company like Time Warner is quite um, not that surprising that they couldn't uh, do a really good job of adapting. Because it, it really is almost impossible. It's, it's a, a really tough situation for a lot of these companies. I, I believe in the next 10 years, we're going to see a lot of the companies that we used to think of as gi giant companies that would never go away actually go away. <laughs> they actually could disappear. Even Microsoft, if they were to make a couple of really bad errors like they did with the internet when they first missed mm -hmm. the vote on that, mm -hmm. they could be very badly hurt. Uh, so uh, it's, it's an exciting time, uh, but at the same time, it's quite dangerous for a lot of these companies. It, it, size doesn't necessarily matter as much as it used to, um, it, but what you do have to be is on your toes. You can't ever rest on your laurels anymore. There's, there's, you're never going to see dinosaur companies uh, that just got their market share and, and just stayed there and, you know, like ancient companies. Things are happening in web time That's now right. if, is if the expression, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're not able to adapt uh, very quickly to, to changes in the landscape, which the OL uh, Time Warner was a change in landscape, uh, then you will uh, have a chance of uh, falling behind. Now, Jeff, by way of explaining why you're qualified to, to, to talk about this, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, what you do at, at Stockhouse.com and where you've been and how, how quickly you got there? Because sure. I think that's an interesting story, and I think that sort of is a great example of exactly what the kind of opportunity the Internet provides and how it's changing the way that we do commerce. Absolutely. Uh, we compete, Stockhouse competes with Reuters, Bloomberg, all these sort of companies that you've definitely heard of, and, and they're definitely giant the, companies. The old, old world media. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And we, can, we also compete with the newer world ones, the Street.com, CBS, Market Watch. The, the, the neatest thing is, this is a company that I founded about 1996, uh, really just on my own credit cards. I actually racked up $100,000 on my credit cards up until a few years ago. Uh, Kids don't try this at home. <laughs> right. My banker thought I had a drug problem or something, but um, <laughs> turned out I was all right. Um, yeah, there's opportunities in this in this uh, market now because of the internet. Um, I don't want to harp too much on the word internet because we'll look at this tape a few years from now and just laugh because uh, you know th how we think of the internet now. It's really in its in its very small stages. It's it's like Morse code compared to uh, the television or telephone. Um, but to get back to, to the beginning yeah, there, how did uh, <laughs> basically uh, over the last few years we've been able to grow tremendously. Uh, we started in Canada, uh, I was based in Vancouver, and we still have most of our, our, a lot of our staff in Vancouver, mm -hmm. even though we're actually now based out in New York. Um, now we're the top financial website in Canada. We, we get um, 30 million page views a month here in Canada. Uh, we're you know, beating everybody out there, um, old and new. Uh, we're large in the U.S. We've got three times the traffic of the street.com in the U.S. We're in Australia, one of the top financial websites in Australia. We just launched in Hong Kong yesterday, and we've done some major deals with Hong Kong companies, uh, China.com, all these sort of people. Um, so things are going very well, and I think the reason that we are able to continue to do well is because we've got our, our ear, basically, to this revolution that's happening. Even with our competitors, Street.com, CBS, MarketWatch, they're not doing anything that revolutionary. They're using the internet to mm -hmm. get their information out, but they're not really developing any, any new ways for investors to get information or anything really exciting like uh, even message boards, anything like that. They didn't even have anything like that. Um, our company is very focused on giving people the power to do whatever they want. We're completely focused on the user. We don't think about much else except giving our users the power to find out the information they need to make equity decisions. But here's the amazing thing to me. I mean, you talk about a CBS market watch. Well, there's an old world company. I mean, CBS has been around CBS. forever, and they've been coming into people's homes forever, and they're an established brand. And here comes a company. In this case, it happens to be your company. But here comes a company from out of the clear blue sky. Guy racks up his credit cards and launches a company, and suddenly he's competing, and that company is competing. You now have 110 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
and you're producing content that competes with the CBS Market Watch. So, you know, you talked about the old world suppliers of, of uh, news information like Reuters. So, the barriers to entry, and certainly you're bringing lots of skill and energy to uh, Absolutely. But it would have been impossible in an old economy for a company to challenge the leading providers of anything the okay. railroads, the radio stations, the TV stations, from out of the clear blue sky on a shoestring. And yet that's exactly the story, that's your story, and it's the story of a whole bunch of other companies where they're using this new medium of the internet to reach consumers with exactly what it is they're, they're looking for. Exactly. This really does change it. It completely changes everything. Um, there's, the barriers of entry are much lower, uh, but uh, some people think the barriers of entry are, are really low. Uh, they're not... Non-existent. Yeah. yeah. They used to be in 1996, 1995, when this whole thing started. In order to compete with, say, Stockhouse or CBS Market Watch now, you'd have to have a, you'd have to raise a fair amount of money, and I would say... You need a lot of credit. It, it wouldn't, <laughs> that's right. It wouldn't be just 100000 It'd probably be uh, $10 million or something like that. Still relatively low. If you wanted to compete with CBS, for right. example, you'd need a billion dollars. Um, so the barriers, I think, will stay relatively low. But then again, the internet's moving towards broadband. Pretty soon, in order to compete, you're going to need video as well. I think the, mm. the steps are always going to be uh, moving up, uh, but it's still a lot easier than it used to be. The, the best thing about the internet is, though, unlike say television where CBS, in, in, in the US it's CBS, NBC, ABC, mm -hmm. good luck breaking in to right. that. The internet makes it so you can, if you have the money or at least uh, have a, a, a good idea, you have a chance to break in because there's no limited amount of space. So as long as you have a good enough product that people will use, yes, the barriers of entry are much less, you have more of an opportunity, you at least have a chance to do it. Whereas in the past, you didn't have a chance. All these People have been around for 100 years. There's no established. Luck. You can't That's take right. it away from them. Now, you mentioned about the danger and the turnover in, in companies. I mean, the f low barriers to entry means opportunity for some, but it also means that uh, although you may now become the new guard and take over, if you're not sharp on your toes, your company, and it's not well managed, uh, then it's not that sure you can catch up to CBS and Market Watch and capture the same number of eyeballs, to use a, a very a new generation net expression, capture the same amount of viewership, but somebody else could overtake you in a nanosecond too. So this notion of working in web time uh, and paying attention to everything changing, that has significant ramifications to an investor, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, so let's talk change. about that, because our viewers are, are watching to see, how does this affect me and my money? Right. And of course, stockhouse.com is, is answering that very question too. It's bringing investors information about how to invest, et cetera. Right. Uh, so lots of opportunity in the, the area of this new economy, but also lots of danger. And if you don't pay attention for five minutes, it can hurt. Can you talk to that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's a tricky environment. As much as uh, those who haven't invested in this market, for example, must look at the charts of, of the NASDAQ companies and want to almost kill themselves at what they've missed. But in actuality, it would have been really hard to really catch all those things. These things sort of happen and just explode, and it, it's really difficult. Uh, but at the same time, these things can come down very quickly as well. Uh, so it's, it's a really difficult environment, even though it's a very bullish environment. It's, it's changing so dramatically. If you don't have time to really watch everything very closely, mm -hmm. having you know, your stop-loss orders on some of these things, so you know, if you're away for the week, you could yeah. lose a lot of money. Uh, it almost reminds me of the, the mining market about five years ago, except there's a major difference, and that is that the Internet is not going to go down the way gold did and drag the whole market down. This is a complete revolution, so there's definitely going to be some winners, but it's, it's, it's still difficult to pick those winners, uh, and you have to be very aware of what's happening out there and, and be on top of things even more than ever. Let's talk for a minute about, I mean, the U.S. market is being converted, and the global market, will argue, is being converted by this new technology, this, this new medium that hasn't existed before. And, I mean, we could talk for a long time about this, and we have a limited amount of time uh, tonight. But let's talk about the emerging markets, because one of the things we also want to pay attention to, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that one of the great investment stories, in 1993, before you started up your company, in 1993, emerging markets were very hot. And last year they were hot again, and in the meantime, you know, not so much. It was, it was a pretty rough time for that. But the promise of the emerging markets are, here are these nations that haven't really industrialized to the same extent. They don't have the same infrastructure uh, in terms of 
concrete and bricks and mortar, the old world economies, they hadn't even got there yet. They didn't have the same development as the United States or Europe, Western Europe did or Canada did. What does all this mean for those nations? If what you're trying to do is jump into the 1950s, I mean, we were excited about, for instance, Latin America because they were jumping into the 1950s in terms of adding technology and infrastructure. What does all of this mean? Because we're, we're jumping into a whole new millennium here, a whole new level of technology. Uh, where does an investor go when he looks at emerging markets, and where do the emerging markets go? Well, it's very exciting. Actually, this is the biggest, most exciting thing for our company at the moment is our, is our expansion globally. Uh, we're big in the U.S. and in North America, Australia, but a lot of the other areas are, are what's really driving a lot of interest in our company right now. As you know, we're private and all that sort of mm -hmm. thing, but we're raising money. We're getting capitalized in the hundreds of millions, and it's because of our going into all, all these exciting markets that are really untapped. So it's a very exciting time. Again, like the mining markets, when there was a boom in certain areas, we're going to see a boom actually started already in Europe. Everyone's starting to talk, oh, England's next, all this is next, and it will be. And same with Asia. I was just in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, amazing things are ha happening right now. They're raising money like crazy, just throwing it at Internet startups. Of course, there's going to be a lot of money lost mm -hmm, because you mm -hmm, can't just throw right. money at everything. But it's very exciting at the same time. Everything that we've seen in North America will happen around the world. So there is going to be very exciting times for investors if they can pick the right companies and, and, and uh, get in early, which is right now, really, and, and in the next year or so. So it's um, tremendous times. There's, there's certain markets. Every market is different. So it's not that easy to pick who's going to do the best. Uh, everyone talks about China, but if you go to China, and I was just there actually last week, it's not really ready <laughs> for a major internet revolution. There's going to be a lot of activity in China, without a doubt, and eventually it will be huge with, with just the population mm -hmm. base and as their e economics rise up. But at the moment, if you go in there and you, you just sort of ask people on the street if they're on the internet, you know, you're lucky if they even have a TV, a lot of the people. So, uh, a long way to go. Are they going to be left behind? We've got a minute left. Are they going to be left behind? Absolutely not. It, because a lot of these countries didn't originally even have much technology and they're starting to get uh, better economically, they have actually will not be left behind. Luckily, they're going to get on right in the next five years or so, which is the right time. They're going to bypass all the older technology, so it might even be easier for them to transform into the newer sort of age uh, because they're not left with all that So baggage. they're going to jump over the bricks and mortar stage and it's get possible. straight with that. It's definitely possible. 30 seconds left. Best place to invest. <laughs> It's really tough. Definitely Asia is very exciting right now. Um, Asia has always been a source of a, a lot of capital. Uh, they've always been really quick to catch up when they miss the start of something. Mm -hmm. They're very entrepreneurial. I'm seeing amazing stuff in Hong Kong right now. Japan, not quite as much. Hong Kong, Singapore, definitely. Uh, Taiwan. I'm definitely excited about Asia. Not enough time to talk to you about all the ideas you've got, but thanks very much for being on the show. That's Jeff Berwick. He is the president of Stockhouse.com. Uh, just a terrific story about the revolution that's changing the way you invest. We're going to take a break. Take a look at this investor tip. Life is in direct.